Let's look at movies from an expert's perspective. We're thinking beyond movies. Imagine being germ-free. It's Reogenesis technology. It's on cinema at the cinema with me, your host, Tim Heidecker. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On Cinema at the Cinema, brought to you by Rio Genesis. My name is Tim Heidecker. I am the host of On Cinema at the Cinema, and we're excited to bring you new news about the movies coming to your cinemas this week, give you expert advice on what to see and what not to see. I've got a couple guests today I want to introduce. As always, uh, from the VFA, Greg Turkington. Hey guys. And also with us is uh, a uh, new uh, expert that I'm bringing to the show, a technology expert, and uh, Max, uh, what was your last name again? Uh, Ucomco. Ucom Max Ucomco, f coming to us from Best Buy. That's a, Best Buy we all know is a terrific store that mm -hmm. uh, provides all kinds of t uh, technology and uh, TVs and uh, all that kind of stuff. Not VCRs, because they're the ones that actually they're discontinued. discontinued. And we don't use VCRs anymore. Yeah, but it's but, because of places like Best Buy that, that gave up on the format, even though people were still buying the tapes. Okay, well, let's respect our guest here. The reason I have Max here, uh, last week we delved into the Ready Player One from Mr. Spielberg, and it turned me on to this world of VR that I really didn't know much about. And I went down to the Best Buy, and Max here is one of the, I mean, just a killer uh, salesman. Uh, he got me into a new 70-inch Samsung, which is 4K, um, and a couple other great devices, HDMI cables he got me onto, and a, bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff, re universal remote from Logitech, just a ton of great cool stuff. But the reason I went there is to find out about VR, because I thought this is the future, and I love being a little bit ahead of the curve. So talk to me quickly about... VR um, in a minute. I wanted to make a quick note uh, and say thanks to Rio Genesis for making the show possible, riogenesis.com. People have been asking me, by the way, because I kind of mentioned this very quickly about my process with the Germ Shield X, the uh, powder, the shake that I've been making. I wanted to give my official recipe uh, for what I do. If you guys are going to go with the Germ Shield X powder, uh, this is the shake I make. I make it two, three times a day. Basically, it's real simple. You take a big scoop of the Rio Genesis uh, into, a, into your blender, some ice, some uh, almond milk, like a cup of, um, couple of cups of almond milk, or whatever, real milk if you want to do real milk, a uh, cup of peanut butter, a uh, couple, I put in, sometimes I put in a uh, banana, two bananas, uh, and some chocolate syrup, and then blend, and that's, I'm telling you, it's better than a McDonald's shake. It is, it's such a delicious, it's got a little sweetness to it, and it's got nutrition, and you're blocking germs. 100%. Some germs are good for building up no your germs immune are, system. No germs are good. Well, you're if you want to have an immune system, you're talking about, excuse me, you're talking about probiotics, and you're, you're speaking without knowledge. But you told okay, me you're not even washing your hands. I asked you to stop wearing those goddamn hats. You told me you're not even Shut washing up. your hands I, anymore because of this stuff. Why That's would you not, need to wash your hands if you have no germs? I told you not to, speaking of germs, those, those disgusting uh, used hats, they're not to be on this set ever again. I asked you, that was your first warning. I don't do second warnings. I'm going to do it for you now. If that hat, any of those goddamn uh, promotional hats end up on this set again, you're off the show. Now, VR. T sorry about that, Max. This is... Very disrespectful, I think, to be wearing these hats, um, and you don't look good in them either. Well, the hats are, are everyone's kind of saying that by unofficial the way. popcorn you classics. Like well, I'm getting a lot of letters to the contrary. Okay. These are unofficial popcorn classics. Since you're too busy talking about this Dr. San garbage it's not product Dr. San, that you probably me. found in his, you in don't his mention estate his sale, um, you don't mention I'm his trying name to include Shut popcorn up. classics Shut up or I'm by bringing you them read as that a letter. Hat. I'm not going to let you read All that right. letter, Max. I apologize. Uh, talk to me about VR, because we brought one of these here. This is a VR unit set. What is VR? A lot of people are like, why do they keep saying VR? What is virtually real technology? So essentially, uh, you can put on the headset, goggles, right. whatever you want to call them, and you can see pretty much everything around you. you. You'll be immersed into the video game, the movie, whatever now, it is This is doing. black right now. This is, if this was hooked up to a movie or whatever, I'd be seeing basically beyond widescreen, folks. It would, this would be another level of... You'd be seeing 360, correct? Yes, sir. And this is the, would you agree, you, you said this to me at the store, I thought it was profound. 
This is the future, you think, of entertainment? I think so, yes. I think it is the future. Yeah. So now, you th you know, this is where movie Spielberg knows it. That's why he made Ready Player One. That's why, uh, that's the, the trend. That's the definition. That's where we're going. So uh, thank you for this. No or problem. thank you for the, de for the demo and for the education. Fascinating stuff. Of course, anytime. Um, let's quickly get to your Tim Burton update, and then we can get into the movies. Quickly. <coughs> Um, as everybody knows, what's going on with Tim Burton and the Sherlock Gnomes controversy, uh, I took the liberty of writing an open letter to Mr. Burton, which I'm going to read this week, and then next week hopefully we'll have his response. Let Summarize me it if you need to. Mr. Burton, thank you for your letter. In your letter of four days ago, you stated, to answer your question, I have not seen Sherlock Gnomes. Yet if you reread my letter to you, whether or not you had seen Sherlock Gnomes was not my question. My question was, why did you not direct the film? Mm -hmm. Which, as great as it was, would have been even greater had you been at the helm. Okay. It is common knowledge amongst film experts and the general public that your collaborations with Johnny Depp are among the most beloved and profitable in film history. Thank you. Please right. do not insult my intelligence and that of your many fans by assuming that we do not know this fact. Okay. It is disingenuous for you to pretend that a major studio would produce a new Johnny Depp film without first asking you if you were available to helm the project. All right, thanks. Millions of dollars, Great. hold on, millions of dollars and potentially tens of thousands of jobs hang in the balance of any major film production. That's... To have gone with James Stevenson, an unknown director, instead of a proven Depp collaborator and confidant, is a decision that no studio executive would ever make voluntarily. Period. Thus, we are left to conclude that you declined of your own volition to okay. work on Sherlock Gnomes for reasons that you did not explain that I feel as fans were entitled to That's know. That's it. Thank no, you. this is the conclusion. Wait. As I stated in my first letter, my program on cinema at the cinema is at this time the premier source of movie expertise and criticism on the web and television. We have a very large viewership whose enthusiasm said, for film is said the letter was, Excuse me, you said the letter was going to take 10 seconds. These are film buffs who generally... These are film buffs who generally will see a new release several How long times is this? Is if the movie is to their liking. My show? I hope that you will not disappoint them with further evasiveness. I look forward to your future projects with Mr. Depp Sincerely, Greg Turkington, on Cinema at the Cinema co-host. So okay. this letter is just to get him to answer the question, why did you not direct Sherlock Gnomes? Yeah, that's clear. Didn't. We got that. But he we, didn't answer it Thank you. The, Thank when you. I sent the first letter. Thank you. So hopefully this gets an Thank answer you. from him. Thank and then you very we much. Can read you that want to talk about movies? next week on the show. Yeah, I would love okay. to. All and right. That's what this was. This was talking about movies. Okay. Put not about, about 3D hear about... Uh, glasses, which they already had in the 50s. It's not a new technology. And okay. I'll be reading the right, reply on the show as well. All right. Well, we'll see. I don't. I don't know if anyone's interested in the minutia of that relationship anymore. Um, all right. Let's get into the movies. First up, Chachiqua, uh, Chip, Ch Chap, Patchiquatic, Chachiquatic, Chachiquatic, Chachip, 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 Chachip. Like they said in the movie about 500 mm -hmm. times if you saw the movie. Starring Kate, John, directed by John Coran, starring Kate Mara, Olivia Thurb, Blee, Jane Cl Jason Clark. Uh, this is the story of Ted Kennedy, Lion Ted Kennedy, uh, one of the worst rats in the history of politics. It's his life and career as they become derailed after he's involved in a fatal 1969 car accident that claims the life of a young campaign strategist, Mary Jo Kopnecki. 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 Kopnekni. This is uh, the story of Ted Kennedy. It says the life and times of Ted Kennedy and uh, sort of the trouble he got into. And uh, it, was, it was good to see some, finally this guy get taken down a few pegs. I, uh, he's one of, those, uh, one of those swamp dwellers in Washington that uh, sometimes gets glossed over and gets sort of lionized. But he was a bad guy. He was a killer. He uh, uh, killed this woman and... Uh, should have gotten the death penalty, but he ended up do, he ended up dying of natural causes. Of course, I think that's common knowledge. Come a couple years ago, and no one was sad to see him go. By the way, but um, interesting what what bio what Riogenesis could have done in preventing those kinds of issues. Uh, and that's all I'll say about that. Something to think about. Go to Riogenesis.com. Uh, Greg, I give it five bags of popcorn. Great thriller. Reminds me of the Manchurian Candidate. Directed by John Curran, five bags of popcorn for John, from his Caddyshack, from Caddy Chattaquatic. 
I don't think it's quite the political movie that you make it out to be. I think it's kind of more of an old-fashioned horror movie in that you've got a car on a bridge hitting the water and sinking, which is very frightening to most people. That is one of the most common fears, is fear of the deep. And it reminds me of The Deep, which is a movie from 1977 with Jacqueline Bisset and Robert Shaw, who, interestingly enough, was coming off of Jaws, another underwater horror scenario. So right. I do, did really like it. I would give it five bags of popcorn and an inflatable life preserver to save yourself if you ever find yourself in that situation. Okay. You Were Never Really Here. Sounds like the Greg Turkington story. Directed by Lynn's, Lynn Ramsey. Ramsey. Starring Joaquin jo Joaquin Phonix, a traumatized veteran unafraid of violence tracks down missing girls for a living. When a job sp spins out of control, his nightmares overtake him as a conspiracy is uncovered, leading to what may be his death trip or his awakening. So it's either one of those two. Uh, the movie answers that question. I'm not going to give it away. No spoilers on this show. Uh, is it his death trip or his awakening? That's kind of the mystery, it's almost like an old Sherlock Gnomes movie, uh, Sherlock Holmes movie where you have the mystery, what is, you were never really here. That's kind of the interesting question that the movie proposes. It's four bags for me, four bags of popcorn, five bags of popcorn for you were never really here. I'll tell you one thing. Directed by John, I, directed by Lynn's, Lynn Ramsey. I felt like I was there, I was in the theater because uh, it's a very memorable film to see. It's one of the scariest movies in recent mm. years, one of the most horrifying and one of the most real. And I only hope that none of us and none of our viewers ever live through anything like what the characters in this great, great movie lived through. Uh, okay. I'm going to give it five bags of popcorn and maybe a prescription to see a psychiatrist because you're going to need it mm. after you walk out of this one. It's a scary film. Heavy stuff. I want to thank you, and uh, oh, you have a new segment that you want to uh, do Yeah, here. this is a segment that we're pretty proud of. It's kind of a tribute to uh, somebody who's meant a lot to the On Cinema family, our good friend, Mark Proch, who um, is under the weather at the moment. Uh, this is a segment called On Cinema's Archives, and we're going to be looking at some rare footage from Mark's personal archives. Okay. Take a look. I think you'll like it. I'll do that part. But take a look. I think you'll like it. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of On Cinema Archives, where we took take a look at lost clips from Mark Prook's archives, personal archives. Okay, go. Mark Prook, 5'11". Five, five uh, I'm auditioning for the Ghost of Christmas Past. Are you the spirit, the specter whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the Ghost of Christmas Past. Long past? No, your past. I believe I would rather have your countenance extinguished from my presence. What? Would you so soon put out the light I give? What is your concern then for me? Your welfare. All right, very interesting. That was, we ended up, uh, I recognized that from Decker, which we're not, by the way. Uh, I've lost the rights to. Hmm? The Delgados have clamped down, and now they're saying that they own the, the, all the uh, Decker intellectual property. But they wouldn't own King's, Kington or any yep. of the other characters. Yeah, the whole umbrella, Davidson. Well, I never right. signed anything with the Delgados, so. Uh, finally, big news, thanks to Max, who's been here teching out and sort of fig figuring everything out. Uh, Max has agreed to set us up with our own VR rig here. Uh, so next week, hopefully by next week, I think we'll be able to uh, enact this, put this into action. You're going to be seeing, for the first time ever, on cinema, at the cinema, in VR. So whatever it takes, you want to get your, I don't know, whatever your rig is, get this, or Max, you have a recommend, you recommend this, this is mm -hmm, Samsung or Oculus, whatever you want. Get the unit, because next week we're throwing out all the cameras here, we're getting rid of all the... Equipment can here. you watch it the regular way too? You cannot. It'll be in VR. Prepare, because that's the future. We're not waiting around for it. Thanks, guys. See you next week. People so, aren't going to be able to get the movie yes, reviews they if they have to buy this stuff They're to not watch gonna have the to, show. You can. How much is this? Two hundred dollars? Yeah, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. So not everybody has that kind of money to buy. So I wouldn't be able to buy something like that. It's 
it's, it's a lot to expect the viewers to go buy something like that just to find out about Well, what do you think Henry Ford you don't did when he introduced the car? You don't just, you know what I mean? You got to push it forward. You don't need something like that to watch this show. You shouldn't need something like that to watch this show. You shouldn't, but you will.